All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to 15 and 15. Today, we've got friends from the Writing Center. They are not only doing this presentation, they are serving writers at the same time. Everybody's super busy, but we're so grateful that they stopped in. So with that, I'm going to toss it over to Jane and to Dan. Take it away, Jane. That's already, you already had that. I can, I just needed them from Robin. Oh, I just need Robin. Yeah. You're, so you're, Robin. Everything's good in your end. Yeah. <laughs> I'll share. All right. Got it. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jane. Hi, Dan. And you can, I, my sound is on. You can hear me. We sure can. All right. Hello to our viewers today and to our future, our future viewers. Uh, as I was thinking about possible topics for a 15 and 15 session, I wanted to harness the experience and wisdom of our veteran writing staff. So today's session will focus on what they have to say about their experiences with meaningful writing projects. Joining us are two writing consultants who are seniors, Megan Barrell and Dan Harrison. They're both English majors, uh, but that's a coincidence because our staff members have majors across the disciplines. Next year, Megan is headed for law school and Dan is headed for grad school in English studies. Go to the next slide. In preparing for today's presentation, I immediately thought of research by three important scholars of the Writing Center profession, Michelle Eudis, Anne Ellen Geller, and Neil Lerner. And these three are like rock stars of the Writing Center world. And they took on the big question of what makes college writing assignments meaningful for students. They surveyed 707 seniors at three universities and determined three critical elements, agency, engagement, and learning for transfer. They also interviewed 60 faculty of courses named in the surveys, and the authors drew conclusions about how students learn, as well as about goals and values faculty demonstrate in the writing they assign. That's fine. <laughs> um, Agency, uh, the student responses indicated agency is the opportunity to explore a subject the writer is passionate about or practice writing that's relevant to their future careers or aspirations. Uh, at the same time, the writers appreciated a balance between freedom and structure, and they valued coaching and feedback from faculty and classmates as they learn disciplinary conventions. For engagement, students frequently cited projects that were completed over time with frequent opportunities to engage with faculty and classmates along the way. They valued the opportunity to immerse themselves in a topic and project that interested them. And learning for transfer, the project was applicable and relevant to the writer in that it connected to prior experience or to developing disciplinary their disciplinary identity. It was a way to process and make connections regarding past events or it was an opportunity to practice writing they expect to do in the future, whether professionally or in some other context. Finally, students reported valuing writing projects that were tied to identity, um, who students want to be and become. I will mention here that Dan and Megan both chose projects from courses in their major, but almost half the students surveyed in the Eidus et al. study reported their most meaningful writing project was in a course outside their major. I asked Megan and Dan to use findings from the Meaningful Writing Project as the framework for their remarks. Let's hear from Megan and Dan. Can everyone hear us all right? Yep. Hang on. Yep. Perfect, wonderful, all settled. So we're gonna hear from Megan first. Yeah, so I'm Megan Farrell. Um, so I took a fiction workshop class last uh, semester, and for the final paper, we got to write a reflection. Um, and throughout the class, we had written short stories every week, and um, there so there were expectations and due dates along the way. And uh, through those short stories, I was encouraged to try new things, and I received feedback not only from my professor, but my peers, and I could choose whether or not I used that feedback. So that gave me some agency within the short stories themselves. Um, and I felt more engaged because we had a regular routine. Um, I knew that every week I would get um, some feedback and I got to collaborate with peers who also enjoyed writing. 
and um, it was nice having that routine. And at the end, when I had to write the final reflection paper, I got to see all my progress because I had written about 14 short stories. So I got to reflect on my process and those short stories. And I think being able to write about whatever I wanted was also a big part of what made that meaningful for me. Um, so I really got to like experiment with things. Um, I think the thing that gave me the most uh, skills to transfer into my real life were was in the reflection because by reflecting on my process, I'd seen the ways I'd grown as a writer and I realized I got in my own way a lot. And by just letting myself produce garbage writing, um, I could make you know more effective writing later because it was just about getting the words out and I was I felt less concerned about producing garbage work um and I think not only as a writer I will consider that when doing anything I'm either not confident in or um just need some trial and error I won't shy away from trial and error basically um so I guess the reflection paper helped me learn to persevere and be less critical of myself because I got to see that progress um, and really consider who, what, I, how I, what kind of writer I wanted to be. And um, it made me realize other opportunities for my future too. Like I started to seriously consider like being an author and writing novels and things of that nature. So that whole reflection and I think entire class was very meaningful to me because of those elements. Cool. Thanks, Megan. Yeah. Um, this, uh, no, uh, fantastic. Um, yeah. Hi, my name's Dan. Um, so in terms of meaningful writing projects, one that I think quite fondly about was actually a project I did for my early modern Renaissance literature class last year, um, with Professor Nick Helms and, and the assignments that Nick assigns, what they call, uh, on essays. So you have the option to do a traditional essay or you can do an alternative method. So, you know, some folks made a board game or a like Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which is very neat. And I went to write sort of a traditional essay-esque, but I wanted to bring in some more contemporary influences. And so I met with Professor Helms and talked about it. And the idea that I had was comparing this, this early modern text, which I chose a fellow to modern um, hip hop music and so some sort of hip hop aspect idea album and and nick and i were able to kind of sit down and brainstorm about this idea and came up with this cool comparison between a a childish gambino music video called this is america and othello and it was a ton of fun to sit down and do that and i don't think i would have reached that conclusion without you know that support from the professor to go like yeah like reach to reach out of your comfort zone which was super neat and so i had this choice of a topic that that really interested me and that i was personally invested in and i had that agency which was really cool and then you know, as I moved through the process, I ran into some roadblocks and they were able to share resources with me and things that would, that would kind of help move me further in that research and that added another dimension. And then finally, with all the assignments, Nick was great at encouraging us to consider how that fits into sort of the broader scholarly discussions happening at the time and discussions about the subject. And so instead of just writing this essay for a professor, I felt like I was writing the essay for a broader community and to like engage in this broader discussion. And at that point, whether or not I was actually going to engage in that discussion was irrelevant. It was just framing my work as, as, you know, this has to be effective and this needs to have real world applications. And then ultimately that did lead to me submitting it um, to, to a publication, which has been a really cool process and seeing where that work ultimately goes is really interesting. And I don't think I would have gotten there without that prior support to, to really challenge us and think about how this fits into real world applications. So we had that, I had that personal investment in the project, I had all this support, like ongoing support throughout the process. And uh, and then finally this this way to think about how that fits into a larger puzzle. So yeah, it was a pretty incredible experience. Um, Jane, any closing remarks? Jane's coming over. We have a few extra minutes. And so were there any questions in the chat that anybody had? And I've, I'm always good at asking questions. I can ask these scholars some questions if needed. Can you just remind me what the the three areas are? Um, what are the words, Jane? It's agency, what is it? Um, something about application. Engagement and learning for transfer. 
I, I really feel like that is so helpful. Not like we don't know that, but framing it as those three and then really making sure you can explain how each of those three are part of an assignment is really helpful. You guys explained how it worked in your assignments really, really well. So that's more of a comment, but that's really helpful framework. Um, questions from anybody else? Otherwise I'll let Jane pepper her students. <laughs> I would just add on to that. Um, it was interesting for myself. Like I knew this was a meaningful project, but I hadn't really thought about why it was a meaningful project. And so putting it in this framework helped me realize like, oh wait, that's why I was so invested in it because Nick showed this interest and, and wanted to help me push it. And so that was a cool way to think about it, you know, for me as a student. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I think for me, it was a little bit of the opposite. I didn't realize how meaningful it had been to me until that final reflection paper, um, because then I could finally see the the fruits of my work, so to say, and see how I progressed. So I think the whole course structure was meaningful for me. Awesome. We have a question from Dr. Cheney. Hello. Thank you. This is great. Um, I think at the beginning, you said that there in your survey, most people said that their most meaningful writing assignments were outside of their major. Uh, and I wondered if you had any hypotheses about that. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was like half and half is what I remember reading in the book. Um, I have hypotheses, but I bet they do too. Yeah, I think the first thing I think of is because it might be an intellectual challenge. It's If it's outside of your comfort zone, um, you might... It, you kind of have to immerse yourself more because you don't know as much about it. So you're more engaged in a way. You kind of have to pay more careful attention. That would be my guess. I would wonder if if students sort of get a little jaded towards work in their own discipline. And when they have the opportunity to choose the general education course and they say, I want to learn about honeybees. That's going to be really cool. And so they have maybe there's more freedom to look at, go after their own interests for like a, like a three or four month period. You also, Megan, uh, made me think about the I guess this is being recorded, but I'll still say it, the, the bullshit factor in writing where people are just trying to phone it in, that it is kind of harder to do that when you have, well, we think of it as easier to do that when you don't know anything because you just Google, you find the top shelf stuff and you just start writing it down. But you're also showing that like once we get jaded in our own fields and we know a little something, it's sort of easier to phone it in than when you come with a beginner's mind to something and you, you know, really have to figure out what what you think. Um, I, I like thinking about that that question, and I like thinking about how you might design for people who are a little more jaded and experienced versus people who are a little fresher and afraid. Right. So <laughs> interesting. Um, I think we have time for one more question. If anybody has it, or final comment. Uh, I wanted to comment that the references listed on the final slide, one of them is an entire book, but two of them are articles that don't take long and they're rich and useful. If you and wanted to talk perfect, a little more deeply. Perfect way to end. Uh, you will see in the chat, the link to the 15 and 15 resources. So we will have this recording and uh, all the resources that Jane has shared there. So please check it out. And thanks to all our guests and we'll see y'all tomorrow at noon, I think. No, yeah, it's Thursday tomorrow. See you tomorrow at noon. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.